So in this video, we're going to be looking at how much water it takes to float a car and also why it's a really bad idea to drive through a deep ford and especially flood water. I'd like to thank Tom Sunderland for much of the footage. Please take a look at his YouTube channel for full clips and much more. And as for this Fiat 500, well, we're going to find out what happens to that at the end of the video. Now there's three really good reasons not to drive in flood water. The first is debris can be washed into the road and hidden and you can't see it in the turbidity. The second, the ground may be washed away by the flood, leaving a nasty hole. And third, flood water can be very fast moving and very easily wash your car away, something we'll look at later on in this video. And remember, the emergency services have enough to do without rescuing you. Now I'd also like to thank this fella, who we're going to meet at the end of the analysis. So the question is, how deep must water be to float a car? Now you may have seen the 15 to float campaign by the SS, which suggests that you only need 15 centimetres of water depth to float a small car. And that was based on research carried out by the University of New South Wales, which I've linked to here, and there's the URL. So what does that actually look like? Here's the small car that they used, and to scale, that is 15 centimetres, which as you can see, barely reaches the bottom of the car. So what's going on? We take a bit of a closer look at the campaign and it says that a small car can be moved by water, not float, but they've changed it to move only 15 centimetres deep at a water flow speed of 3.6 kilometres an hour. Well, I've read the report and I can't see where they got 3.6 kilometres an hour from. I think that's more likely to be around 3 metres a second, which is more like about 10 kilometres an hour. But anyway, the point being is that it's actually more to do with moving the car than floating it. Okay, so here's what they did. Um, they took this car and they submerged it in water and they found that it actually floated in about 0.6 metres or 600 millimetres and with the rear wheels clear of the floor at that point. So let's do some calculations. I thought it'd be interesting to try and work backwards from that. We know that the weight of the car and the driver is 11.05 kilograms because they put sandbags in there for a 60 kilogram driver, so it's a bit more than 1,050. The volume of the tyres, we can calculate at approximately 80 litres and the volume of the cabin we can take a section out of that and we can call that 1079 litres. We add the two together bring it to 1160 litres which is more than the 1105 litres or kilograms we need to float the car and we know that that section of cabin is 200 mil off the ground so combined that gives us 600 mil meters of water depth which is exactly what they found. So an interesting reverse engineering there. Now, they also did some dynamic testing, this time with a scale model, and this is at four meters a second, which is pretty quick, about 12 kilometers um, an hour, and they found that the critical flow there was 225 um, millimeters, and that's when the car started to get washed away. So what is the takeaway from all of this? Well, I think it's simply this. Your vehicle can be washed away in much less depth than is needed to float it. So this is the depth needed to float the car. And if you've got water fast enough, this is how little water you need to be able to push the car around, which is considerably So here's less. our friend again, and he has his car floating and it is now starting to drift downstream a little bit. It's not too bad because the water's not flowing too fast and there's a friendly bridge in the way. But what if it was faster flowing water and there wasn't a bridge to stop him? What would you do at that point? Now, if you do happen to be in a car that is in floating and in danger, what would you like to do? Well, clearly you'd like to stop floating. Now, if you get to the point where your car has the engine stopped because it's conked out and it is floating downstream, your car is going to be a write-off. The thing to do is make sure you are not going to be a write-off too. And the best way to do that is to stop the car floating. To stop the car floating, you want to reduce buoyancy and add grip to the car because it's lost grip because it's being lifted off the ground. The best way to do that is to reduce the buoyancy and that means opening the doors and that gets rid of the cabin buoyancy. Thus, uh, reducing the buoyancy and restoring some grip to the wheels and hopefully you will then stop being washed downstream. 
Now this is Ford's Range Raptor, a specialised off-road vehicle with a very high wading depth. And what does the owner's manual say about it? Well, it gives a whole range of water depths and speed, some of which I personally think are on the high side, but anyway. The important thing is that at 450 mil, which is a bit less, a bit more than half that wheel height, the maximum speed Ford recommend for fording is seven kilometers an hour, which is a lot less than a lot of people try and drive through Fords in just normal cars. Now, if you are going to drive through a Ford, drive through slowly, not that fast, because even if you're in a lifted four wheel drive like this one with larger than standard tires, well, you can still ingest water into your engine, as you can see, and end up not really going very much further at all. Now here's another example. This is a pretty tall truck compared to normal car and the water really isn't that deep. But let's take a look. Actually, it doesn't seem to have got through okay. Now, let me all that. And now we can see what the problem is. This is the engine's air intake, which is only meant to have air, not water. So that's going to be, at the very least, an expensive repair. Now this is a snorkel, which is a way of getting around that problem of the engine ingesting water. We call it a snorkel when it's fully sealed and RAI or raised air intake when it is not fully sealed. And that's where the engine takes its air in. Now here's one in action. Now this video actually depicts extremely dangerous driving, but you can see that the vehicle is well and truly submerged. There's a lot of buoyancy in the back, which is why it's nosed down and the engine compartment is flooded. But despite that, because the snorkel is above the water even if only just you can see that the engine doesn't actually stop running you can't even hear it in the video there's, there's music in the original um, and the, the car is still actually functioning now the car could well be damaged because it's a lot of water ingress would be slowly coming into that door seals are never really really quite perfect particularly not in these older vehicles so this is not recommended at all i'm simply showing that the vehicle is still able to run its engine so the limiting factor in four wheel drive water crossings is often buoyancy, not the fact that the snorkel moves the air intake up. So that's what you need to look at. Are you likely to float and go downstream as opposed to just, is it too deep for my snorkel? Now it is possible to drive a four wheel drive through very deep water, but the vehicle must be appropriately modified. You must use the right techniques and you must prepare, for example, walking through the track. Otherwise you might end up on Tom Sunderland's YouTube channel. So this is an example of a good water crossing. It's probably about the maximum depth you'd want to take a car through. Look at that beautiful bow wave at exactly the right speed. So it's just been approached with caution. Now it doesn't make for a great YouTube video, but it is the right way to do it. So here's the Fiat 500 again, and as you can see, it's pretty much floating. The front wheel's on the ground, as is often the case with most cars. You've got a heavy engine there, and it's front wheel drive. The rears are actually floating in the water, but because the driver's driven in really slowly, which is a good idea, able to very fortunately back the car out. Now, even though it's out of the water, the car may well still be pretty much terminally damaged by water ingress, but at least hasn't gone smashing through it and got into even more trouble. So again, the message in this video is if it's flooded, forget it. That is what the authorities say the world over and it is good advice. You just don't know what's underneath flood water and your car can be washed away in much less water than it takes to float it. Best thing you can do, turn around and don't drown.